Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a full face of Project Pan Focus items, and I'm gonna be sharing it with you in natural light. So I'm sitting in front of my window right now, and I thought that we could just do this without any sort of artificial lighting. I completely natural light today, and so I can really show you what these products look like on the skin, as well as how I like to actually use them on an everyday basis. So let's get on into it. I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in Spotlight as kind of like a glowy primer. So I want to start with this. I did cut a little bit more of the product down also just so you know because it was getting really hard to reach for this last little bit of product remaining in the tube. But I'm just going to use my finger to apply this on kind of the highest points of my face where I want a bit of glow. And then I'm going to put my sunscreen over it so that it kind of creates like a glowy primed base. Now that I've been using that product for so long, I am definitely just ready to say goodbye to it. Like I'm so close to done with it. I'm so ready for that day to come, but it is really pretty, especially when I use it as a primer. And then I'm gonna use my Unseen Sunscreen. I wanna give this time to really sink into the skin. So I'm going to apply this on top of my skin now and then do my eye makeup. I applied two finger lengths, sorry, I didn't show you. And I'm just going to kind of smush the product between my hands and then work it into the face that sits on top of the highlighter really well. It's actually the first time I've worn these products in tandem like this, and it creates just a perfect kind of base. But I do wanna let this settle into the skin for a while, so I am gonna move on to my eyes. I'm going to use my e.l.f. Camo Concealer. I'm so close to done with this, so I'm gonna use this as my primer today. There still seems to be never-ending product in here. And then I want to just blend that out with this brush right here that I have been absolutely loving, this one. This is the uh, Spectrum and KJH number 10 brush. I've been using this to kind of blend out my concealer under my eyes, but seeing as I have it on my lids, I'm gonna use it on here today as well. I don't think this concealer is the best primer ever, but my hooded oily lids seem to, you know, react decently well to it. As long as I set it down, it's no problem because I do find that it can really crease on my eyes. And I'm going to set that down as quickly as I can using my Melt Gemini palette. I'm going to use the shade Luna. I've been really wanting to reach for this palette lately. Um, and so today we're going to use this for the majority of my look, I think. I'm using only the Spectrum brush set, by the way, so I'm gonna use this brush number 11 to set that down. Make sure there's no creases first. And then just set that down. This is a little bit deeper than my skin tone, but I think it, it does the trick just fine. I'm gonna use that exact same brush to go into the shade Fire OG. I'm actually really close to hitting pan on this one, I feel like, but not yet. This is not a focused project pan item, but I just, I wanna reach for this. So I'm just going to apply this all over my lid and then blend it out. These are very pigmented eyeshadows and they can be a little bit troublesome to be honest, but as long as you you go into it knowing that it's all, it's all good. So I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who filled out my channel survey. It's the first time I've done something like that. I've been considering doing it for a while, but um, honestly, there was a while last year where I was just super overwhelmed and I didn't want to put myself out there as like trying to in improve my channel because I was just barely keeping up with uh, filming and stuff. But I am definitely feeling like I'm more able to have time to film and I do think that's in part because I am doing fewer project pans. I'm just doing the one focus project and my pan those eyeshadows. So I think that that has just given me more flexibility in my schedule. And so I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who gave me some constructive criticism and as well as some great, like really great video and uh, kind of content ideas. I'm still filtering through everything because there was over 300, over 300 people filled that out, which I was shocked by. I was like expecting like 12. Thank you so, so much. I have a lot of growth definitely to do, of course. And um, I'm really happy that, you know, a lot of you took the time to, to let me know how I can do that and how, what you'd like to see moving forward. I'm gonna go into the shade Mochi now on a very small blender kind of brush. This is the number 17 from the set. 
I'm just gonna blend out the edges with this. I should have probably started with mochi as opposed to uh, using it to blend the darker shade, but whatever. This is how it went. <laughs> now we're gonna move into a palette that's in my pan, those eyeshadows. I have two shades from this palette in that project right now, the shades Royal and the shades Orium. I want to put Orium all over the lid. It's that gorgeous kind of duochrome gold and red kind of shade, red brown kind of color. It's so stunning, but I have mentioned it previously. It has a ton of fallout, so I'm going to use my e.l.f. glitter glue to apply this. I'm gonna try my best to avoid fallout, but it happens always with this eyeshadow. I overlook it because I love the actual shadow itself. It's not the easiest shadow to work with. The rest of the palette, super easy to work with, but for whatever reason, that shade is kind of crumbly. And maybe you guys have some tips for me of how to, how to improve that. And then I'm just going to use my middle finger to dip into the eyeshadow. It feels so smooth on the hands and like it, it doesn't look like it's really chunky or anything. So I'm just gonna really press it into my lids. But I always, always, always get fallout. Um, and it's not generally on application. Like you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's nothing on my face yet. It's just the shadow itself. Maybe it's the way it um, interacts with my, my hooded eyes. I'm really pressing it without smearing it, but really pressing it so that the oils from my fingers can kind of work into it and it prevents any sort of major fallout. At least this is what I found is like the best policy for me with this one. I'm going to go into the shade Royal, which is that gorgeous kind of emerald green shade that I've been working on. And I'm gonna use the number 23 brush from this set. I think this is, well, it's like a liner and brow brush, but I don't really like this as a brow brush. I find it's a little bit too flexible. So with my brow pomade, I find that I can really, you know, move the product around a little bit too much, but with liner, this is perfect. And I'm going to use this as a very soft liner. With my eyes, I do find it's easiest if I kind of like look down into a mirror. So I have my mirror like, you know, a few inches farther down from my face. And uh, that's the best way for me personally, so that I can have my lid exposed, but I'm not completely closing off my eye. So as expected, Orium does have some fallout. It just always does. Like as I blink, as I'm moving my eyes, I seem to get a little bit of fallout. So I think this is probably the majority of what will end up happening. I think the rest of it is pretty secure on there. I hope so, but we'll see. But I am going to just use like a reusable cotton pad and this is actually the Marcel micellar water, but I'm going to just spray it. I'm just going to try my best to pick that up. Now, I do feel like the sunscreen has finally like settled into my skin. It doesn't feel like it's going to pill or like it's sitting on top. It has really worked in. So that's good because I am going to go in with my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. And I'm just going to apply like one and a half pumps to the back of my hand. It's a very small amount of product, barely any product, but I'm just gonna start with this and then add a little bit more if I have to. I'm gonna use the number 04 brush. It's one of these beautiful duo fiber angled brushes. I've never had a brush like this before and I have come to really love this for applying base products. I'm just going to kind of work the product into the brush and then apply that to more so the center of my face. It's where I have the most redness. So that's where I really want to cancel out the redness or like, you know, correct it a little bit and then less and less product will be on the perimeters of my face where I find that my skin is much more uniform. So I really don't need to apply a lot of product this way. And I think that this just looks so skin-like. This product is gorgeous. And like I said in my Project Pan update, there's just something about it that I don't love. And I really can't pinpoint what that is because on application, this is remarkable. Like look at how perfected that looks without looking makeup-y at all. But throughout the day, I do tend to notice it feels like it looks more makeup-y, if that makes any sense. It doesn't feel, it looks more makeup-y. Like I can see it starting to settle into like my smile lines, my lines in my forehead. Um, but like 
as an alternative, the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. I don't find that it settles like that. It really just sits really perfectly, even where I do have like, you know, more of these em emoting kind of lines. But this one can look makeup-y, even when it's applied as such a thin layer like this. So I've used all of the product that was on the back of my hand. And I think for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Barely any coverage, but just enough, because I think where I really feel like the most color correcting needs to happen is underneath of my eyes. So I'm gonna use the e.l.f. concealer again, and I'm just going to apply this right with the doe foot in a very small amount right here. There's so little coming onto the doe foot now, it's wild. I'm gonna scrape a little bit more off. And then just a little bit on that inner corner, but because there's barely any product in here, I am actually able to use the doe foot to apply directly to my face. Previously, I'd have to apply it to the back of my hand and then use um, whatever I actually needed on my face because this doe foot is so large. I'm gonna let this sit on my under eyes for a little while to really retain the coverage, let it really set into place. I know it looks wild, but I have been actually really enjoying doing this with this product. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of my Oma Beauty. Um, this is the Blowout Brow Gel. And I'm just gonna apply this in the meantime. This is like a super quick brow product. Oh, I did get a little bit onto my skin. That's no problem though. Now that that has settled, I'm just gonna use the same brush, the number 10, to buff this into the skin. And I feel like I just get so much coverage from allowing it to sit like that. And just this product honestly does have quite a bit of coverage, but look how perfect that looks. It's so perfected and I barely needed any product at all. So that's why this has lasted me so long. And all together on the actual skin is barely any product between my actual entire face and that concealer. And I feel like it just looks so good this way. It wears a lot better this way as well, having very little product. I'm just going to use the spoolie on the back of this to take off that brow gel. There we go. I am going to set under my eyes again. I've been trying to just do as little powder as possible under my eyes, but I do need to set them. But I'm just going to use my finger to kind of ensure that nothing has fallen into those lines. And then I'm gonna use one of these um, number 08 brushes. I have some washi tape on this one because I use this one for powder. And then the other one, because there's two brushes in the same set, there's it has duplicates. I use one for highlighter, so I like to use uh, a little bit of washi tape to denote which one will be used for which. But I'm just going to work the powder into the brush, not trying to pick up any excessive powder, and then just place that down right up against my eye. And that's it. I don't want to do any kind of like baking these days just being very, very light in my application of product. And that's why all of these products seem to take a long time to use up. Whatever's left on the brush, I'm just using it to apply kind of around my nose and my smile lines, just to ensure that the likelihood of things falling into there is minimized, but don't want it to look makeup-y at all. I really like this kind of finish where it just looks like, still totally looks like skin. Really like that. Now for bronzer, I have my Besca bronzer here with me. This is the Kissed by Santorini. Um, in this set, I haven't found a bronzer brush that I love, but I am gonna try to use this smaller duo fiber brush. This is the 03. I'll try to use this. I'm gonna work the bronzer into the sides of the brush, and then you always use the mirror to kind of like make sure product is really blended into the brush. I always do this with like all of my cheap products. The mirrors are always filthy. And I'm just going to apply it onto like the highest points of my cheeks here and into my temples. And this is just so pretty. Look at how perfect this color match is, or not color match, but like how perfect this bronzer color is for my skin. I almost feel like I wanna do a bit more bronzer than that, but I'm gonna to wait to see. Maybe at the end I'll want a little bit 
more. But I think I'm going to do my lips because I'm going to use the same kind of lip product on both of the lips and on the cheeks. But I'm going to use my ColourPop um, Lippy Pencil in the shade Brink first on my lips just to line them. I just rolled this into my project pan and I imagine it's going to take me a few months to use it up but this formula is so soft and creamy that I do have to sharpen it pretty often and this color is just so nice. It's definitely more rosy mauve kind of color than my natural lips but this is the only like more natural kind of lip product or lip liner that I have in my collection. And I just filled in the entirety of my lips. I think that this makes such a great base for the product I'm gonna put on top, which is the remainder of my Bare Minerals Gen Nude Radiant Lipstick in the shade Notorious. I said that this is like the perfect color pairing and it truly is. I'm just gonna use my ring finger to pop this onto the lips just to offer a little bit of shine. It doesn't really offer more color payoff because I already lined my lips, but it just creates this really soft, balmy kind of texture. I love it, love that so much. And then I'm gonna actually just continue using my ring finger to apply this to the cheeks. So I'm going to apply it on both sides. Need a touch more. And then I'm going to use again a brush to blend it out. I could use my fingers, but I feel like I never can get it uh, to look good when I use my fingers with a cream blush. So I'm just using, this one is the number two brush. It's more of like a tulip kind of shape and I feel like this just really applies blush so nicely. I love this for cream blush. I've been using this brush pretty much exclusively for cream, br cream blushes. Wow, this is a tongue twister. And whatever's left, just kind of bring it across the nose. I love that. Love the way that that looks actually so much. It's so pretty and it creates this slight sheen on the cheeks that I think looks just so healthy and juicy. Now I am going to use my Aether Beauty palette, but I don't want to set it down like on the apples. I really just want to kind of create almost like an ombre blush situation going on. I'm going to use this middle shade right here. This is called Compassion and maybe risky, but I'm going to use the exact same brush. And I'm just going to kind of work it into the brush and just use that to kind of create, like I said, a bit of an ombre, bronzy vibe. And I'm just patting it onto the skin because I didn't set this area, but I do already have the bronzer on. So I do think it allows it to kind of blend a little bit easier. I kind of feel like I need a little something on the lower lash line right now. So I think I'm going to use my Vesca bronzer on the lower lash line. I'm just using this tiny, tiny little more pencil brush. This is the number 18 brush from the set. And I'm just going to apply that right along the lash line. And then I'm going to hop off camera and just quickly put a little bit of mascara, curl my lashes rather, and then put on a little bit of mascara and I'll be right back to share with you the finished look. And then I also wanna share with you how I tally all of my uses. Now that I'm seeing the look all together with the mascara, I'm wearing the CoverGirl Exhibitionist, by the way. Um, I do feel like I want a little bit more bronzer across my face, so I'm gonna use that Vesca bronzer again on the same brush again, and I'm just going to amp it up. I feel like I just have been really into this super bronzy look lately. I've just been loving doing like excessive bronzer. And I never really know until I have like the whole look together if it's, you know, a requirement. But with this more heavy kind of eyeshadow on the lid, I do think that a really bronzy face is, is where it's at for sure. So if I ever feel like I've gone a little too heavy handed or a little bit too far down, I just grab the same brush that I used my foundation with. So this is the brush that I applied the Pretty Fresh with and I can just kind of blend around the edges in an attempt to soften things without having to use any additional product. Just soften the edge on the top of the nose there too, because I always find when I do put a little bit of blush or bronzer there, it can look like a harsh line. As much as I like this lip combo, I'm feeling like it needs to be toned down just a smidge for the look that I have today. So I'm gonna go in with my NYX Filler Instinct. This is more of like a almost peachy kind of shade. 
and it'll just neutralize that a little bit, I think. I'm just gonna apply it right on top. It has that really creamy, balmy kind of texture, so it just meshes into everything really well, but it, you can tell it kind of muted things down a bit, and I think I prefer that just with where, where the look is today. And I think I just want to apply a touch of highlight on the inner corner. So I'm going to use the Aether Beauty palette again. The highlighter shade is called Heart. And I'm just going to use um, kind of like this kind of packing brush. This is the number 12 from the set. And I'm just going to be very, very targeted in my inner corner there. This tiny bit of like a pinky shift I think is gonna look really pretty with the greens though. That is the full face of just Project Pan focus items. Ooh, maybe I'll put on some green earrings. Kind of cute, kind of cute. There we have a full face of Project Pan items. Now what I usually do as my last step at the end of my makeup routine these days is I pull up my phone. I use the Notes app to track my uses on all of my products. I have a list here that has all of my focus products. So I'm wearing my Pretty Fresh foundation, so I'm gonna add a tally onto there. I'm not wearing nude linen because I'm really trying to focus on finishing up the concealer. So the concealer, I do have a tally on, so actually I'm just gonna add that little mark so I can denote the new month. Um, so I'm gonna add a tally there. The Too Faced powder, I also did wear. So we're just gonna add a tally onto that one. Um, spotlight, I am wearing it. I wore it underneath of my sunscreen. And then my four Rollins as well, I have used all of them. So I'm going to put a tally for the Aether palette. I'm not gonna tally two uses because today I am wearing two products from this, but I consider it one use of the entirety of the palette. So I'm just gonna mark one. The Vesca product, I've now worn once, even though it's on the eyes and on the cheeks, it's just one use. Unseen sunscreen I've worn, and Brink I've also worn. So I have a tally for the majority of my focus products today. I am going to tally my eyeshadows without you, but one use for Orium and one use for Royal today. And with that, that is a wrap on today's video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my full face get ready with me with my Project Pan Focus items. I hope that you enjoyed seeing how this look came together, how I like to use all of these products and how I tally them as well. And I hope that you enjoyed seeing everything in natural light. Let me know about your thoughts on this lighting. It is a beautiful sunny spring day today, so I'm very fortunate that it worked out this way, but the weather has not been you know, so consistent as of late. So I do have to obviously use artificial light sometimes, but yeah, anyways, I'm rambling now. That is absolutely everything for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.